Seasonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Barney here from Kit Guru, and in this video, I'm going to be having a go at building my own keyboard. It is kind of like a cheat way of doing it though, because I'm not going to be messing around with a soldering iron or anything. I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet, um, but I did find out that um, the same company that make the Model O, so the glorious PC gaming race um, that create kind of like peripherals and things, they create the Model O mouse, which has been extremely, extremely popular. They actually do kind of like a self assemble keyboard um so i'm actually going to be kind of trying it out live on camera i'm going to do an unboxing i'm going to try and like build it uh the way that it works is that you kind of get like a bare bones keyboard uh, so you get like the actual body of the keyboard you get like the pcb and things uh, and then all you have to do is kind of like insert the switches into it and then you also have to buy and install the keycaps separately as well uh, so it's kind of like a self basically a self-assembly keyboard so like kind of like some diy required if you're into lego then i guess this sort of thing is is quite cool um when it comes to kind of the pricing of this so the gmmmk itself uh so i've got the full size version the actual chassis is $69.95 in the UK. There is also a 10 keyless version and there is also a 60% version. Um, they seem to retail for the same price as well. Um, they're not currently in stock from what I could see um, on overclockers, which is where this comes from. Um, but yeah, they seem to be the same price no matter which kind of chassis you go for, the base chassis anyway. Uh, and then you also buy the switches separately. So I've got two different Gatron switches. Um, I've never actually tried Gatron switches before, so I'm quite interested to see what they feel like. They seem to have a whole load of different options when it comes to switches. They've got like nearly every color. Uh, so if you maybe want a particular switch, but you can't really find that switch on a keyboard that is available to purchase that you actually like the look of then this might be quite a good way of getting around it because i know some switches are much rarer than others um so the gatron switches that i've got i've got a i think one's black and one's red i'm pretty sure yeah, those are the red switches and these are the black switches. So they're both linear. These are the only ones they had in stock. Unfortunately, I did want to try out like one tactile switch and one linear switch. Um, but the only ones that they had in stock at the time were the like two linear switches. Um, so these switches per box, they are... $35.99. They also have uh, for sale on the website the Kale switches. So they are a different type of mechanical switch. Uh, they used to make the Razor switches, the switches on the older Razor keyboards before they started making their own switches with Kale switches. They seem to be pretty good. Uh, once again, um, we always compare to kind of like Cherry Max, but all the different switch brands have like their pros and cons basically. Those are slightly more expensive if you went for the Kale switches. Those are $44.99 or £45. Uh, so the Gatoron switch is available. There's clear, red, black, blue, green, and brown. Um, and I've got the linear. So the red is slightly lighter at 45 grams of uh, force, actuation force, and the black is 50 grams. So they're the slightly heavier switch. Uh, and then when it comes to the... Um, keycaps that I'm going to be using because obviously keycaps are quite important when it comes to the keyboard as well. You're not going to do much typing without keycaps. So I've got two different options that come from uh, Glorious PC Gaming Race themselves. Obviously you can use pretty much any keycap. Uh, I think the keyboard itself, even though you can actually only buy the Kale and Gatoron switches, I can see on the website, I think you can actually use Cherry MX switches with it as well. You can kind of insert whatever switches you want. Uh, so I've got the keycaps, uh, so you can use any keycaps that you want, but I'm using the ones that uh, the glorious PC gaming race is quite a long name to say, uh, they actually sell. So I've got kind of like the basic mechanical keycaps, uh, so they're black ABS plastic, they can't, you pretty much find them on like any keyboard, uh, and they are in the UK version, but it says on the back that they've got a French, German, Nordic, Spanish, Hungarian, Swiss, and um, Portuguese version as well. Um, I think they also come in white, but maybe only in like the US version, uh, whereas this version you've got like a whole load of different languages, so no one's excluded.
I've also got some of the Aura mechanical keycaps to try out. So these ones are slightly different in the fact that they should have like a transparent area around the edge. So they allow a little bit more RGB lighting through. Uh, these ones are in a US layout. Uh, so I don't think these actually come in like the same range of options as kind of the basic keycaps do um, but I think I'm probably going to opt to use these ones because they will be a little bit more interesting and we can see the RGB lighting that you get from this keyboard a little bit better. Uh, so while I've sort of waffled on about the pricing and things we will get on and sort of get this keyboard built. I'm going to unbox the uh, keyboard base itself and then unbox the bits and then basically assemble it live on camera and see what I think of it. Uh, so I'll go over um, this one first. On the back of the box it's got the specifications. It uses USB 2. Uh, it doesn't include all the stuff that you need to actually turn it into a keyboard. Um, it's got a switch puller tool, a keycap puller tool included. It's a 105 key layout, so standard. It has full N key rollover, so that's quite important for a gaming keyboard. Uh, it also has uh, RGB backlighting with 16.8 million colours and special effects and things. We'll definitely try that out. The uh, cord length is 6 foot and it's braided, so I'm definitely going to like that. And then it does Windows XP, Vista uh, 7, 8 and 10 um, windows as well. So uh, all the operating systems. I think I did actually see online as well. It should work with uh, Linux and Mac, um, Mac OS, but... Yeah, it doesn't say that on the box. And then the dimensions, um, yeah, I'll put them up on screen because it's quite wordy. Um, and then it says what switches, so Cherry, Gatron and uh, Kale, uh, plate mounted switch requirements and then uh, also LED compatible switch, which is optional. So yeah, it seems you can pretty much put any switch in it. Uh, also in the back, it just says a lot of stuff about mechanical keyboards uh, and it says it's the most unique gaming keyboard on the market, offering a modular customization in both keycaps and switches. So yeah, I definitely haven't seen anything like this before. I've seen keyboards that you do have uh, switchable keys but they're kind of the keyboards that use the uh, like infrared technology. So they use um, the slightly different tech, whereas this is just like a straight up mechanical keyboard. It doesn't have any of the um, kind of like analog um, switches that have the different like pressure sensitivity and things. Uh, like I've seen on, it was a, a Gigabyte keyboard that I reviewed recently and also like the Wooting 2 and also I think it's the MK850 from Cooler Master. Um, those switches, I'm pretty sure you can remove Maybe not the Cooler Master keyboard, but definitely the Routing 2 and the Gigabyte one, you can remove the switches on. Uh, whereas this keyboard doesn't use that analog technology, it just simply has normal mechanical switches that you can switch around. So that is really quite cool. I've definitely not seen uh, anything like it before. So let's open the box up. Right, so it's a pretty pretty basic packaging on this keyboard. It is just a plain black and white box. You don't really get anything fancy. Um, inside there's like a plastic kind of cover and then the keyboard kind of body is in like a foam wrapping. I'm gonna try to keep everything nice and neat and tidy so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I get all the packaging, everything on the floor. Uh, so this is the bare band bare bones keyboard uh, base that you get. First thing I've noticed is it's quite lightweight because obviously it's not got any switches or keycaps in it. So um, for actually just for the base of the keyboard, it has a decent amount of weight to it, but it is definitely lighter than I'm used to feeling from a mechanical keyboard because uh, it's just missing a few bits. It feels very, very solid. So it is quite a thin uh, keyboard base. It is literally kind of like flat onto the desk. Uh, yeah, there's not really much height to it at all, so that's going to make it slightly more comfortable maybe if you don't want to use a wrist rest. Obviously, it doesn't come with a wrist rest. It feels like a really well-built chassis, so the back of the keyboard is like black plastic. The front of the keyboard is, an, is a nice aluminium faceplate, and it looks like you could probably remove this quite easily. So it's got a few screws and things on here, so if you wanted to go like a step further, I'm not going to do it because this is like a review sample, <laughs> and I've never done it before anyway. You could maybe like take that off and spray painted it if you wanted it silver or wanted it uh, white or something. Uh, it's got this braided cable at the top here. And the cable, I think, is two meters. I have got it on my notes. Okay, yeah, the cable says it's six foot. So I think that's like 1.8 meters, maybe, if I'm right. I'm not, I can't, I'm not too sure of the conversion. Um, but yeah, it's a decent length cable anyway. It's nicely braided. Uh, one thing that I've noticed though, I don't like the fact that it's not removable. I would think maybe for like a modular keyboard, it'd be quite nice if they added like a USB-C 
cable that you could remove so you can maybe replace it with a white cable or any color cable you want really that would be quite a nice feature but the cable that does come with it is is nice it's really nicely braided it's got like a little kind of cap on the end so it looks like you can take that off like a dust cap that doesn't actually come off as easy as i thought it was gonna there we go it's got a dust cap on the end so that looks that's gonna come in handy i guess if you're gonna take it somewhere with you you can just pop that on and it means the USB connector doesn't get a load of stuff in it from like the bottom of your bag or whatever. Uh, also on the back, it's got these two kind of like plastic flip out feet. They are a little bit on the flimsy side, but they have got like a rubber pad on the bottom. Uh, and the feet as well flip out backwards. So that can be quite annoying because they're kind of feet that would flick down easily uh, while you're gaming. They might kind of suddenly flick down. I like the feet that flip out sideways. Um, that's what I personally prefer because I find that they're a little bit more stable and things. Uh, also on the back here it looks like we've got a keycap puller. Uh, so it is kind of built into the actual like chassis of the keyboard. I'm trying to get it out. There we go, I got it. <laughs> Uh, like a red keycap puller that's built into the chassis so being a modular keyboard I guess that kind of makes sense that maybe you might want to be switching things up kind of on a regular basis but yeah the actual chassis chassis seems seems pretty neat we'll take a look at the other stuff that comes with it so it looks like we've got two keycaps um they're red in coloration <laughs> oh they say ascend they've got ascend written on text on them so you've got two ascend uh keycaps they feel just like normal cheapy kind of keycaps like uh, abs plastic keycaps uh and then we've also got i think this is probably the switch puller because it does look a little bit different um yeah that's got to be the switch puller so that's made of metal that's quite nice uh, and then we've got a couple of rubber pads in here as well so th those will be spare rubber pads for the feet of the keyboard yeah so it's got these smaller ones at the top and the larger ones down the bottom and it's got got a spare spare pair of each of those i've got the user guide uh, so i'm hoping this is probably going to give me some tips i imagine probably inserting the switches and putting the keycaps on is pretty uh straightforward pretty kind of like common sense to do but you never know so i will check out the user guide and then we've also got a little sheet here which i think ah that's how to replace the switches so that's some instructions for definite this it looks like it's just kind of like their other products so they've got like their other switches i saw that if you want to test out like a group of switches they sell for like nine pounds or ten pounds you can buy like a switch switch test pack that has like one of every switch so you can try them out before you actually commit to buying a whole box of switches if you're not sure which ones you want to get so that's quite cool and they've got o-rings as well o-rings on keyboards make it quieter to type on uh, and then you've got like a mouse pad and a wrist pad as well so it doesn't actually have the model o mouse on it it's just kind of keyboard accessories um but yeah that's the other stuff that comes with it that tells us how to do it. So yeah, the red thing on the back of the keyboard is the keycap puller. That is the switch remover. And then it also says that you may need to adjust the pins. Oh no, this is slightly more technical than what I was hoping for. Uh, so see page nine in the manual uh, and you need to make sure they're perfectly straight because sometimes due to shipping or improper insertion, the pins can be bent. So you just need to straighten them back out. So yeah, it, I guess this might take a little bit longer than <laughs> what I was expecting. Uh, insert, insert the switch, align the holes on the keyboard and insert straight down. There should be minimal resistance and it should pop into the frame. Uh, it is also recommended this time you have a text editor on your PC open to make sure the switch works when you press it. Oh, okay. I don't have anything set up for that. I'm just going to wing it and then like test it at the end and hope that it works. Um, you could also set the LED mode on the keyboard to reactive mode and the switch should light when you press it. That's kind of smart actually. That is quite smart. Maybe we could set that up so I can actually actually check that's working. Um, and it says that it is safe to swap switches while your keyboard is plugged into your PC. So it's not just plug and play. It's like play, like play while plugging. I, <laughs> it's you can actually switch the switches like with it still plugged in. Oh, that's quite cool. So I guess the metal. The metal contact of the switch kind of goes into the PCB so you don't really have any risk of like getting damaging it or getting a shock from it or anything. Um, yeah and then you put the keycap back on so that doesn't seem too bad. Let's take a look at the user guide. Uh, 
Right, so it has the different sh media shortcuts that the keyboard has. So um, I'm guessing that, yeah, it has that. Once you put the keycaps and stuff on, it's got media shortcuts. They're all across the F keys at the top of the keyboard and you use the function key. So no dedicated media keys, but it does have media keys. Tells you about the backlighting, tells you about the hot keys, the minimalistic design, um, blah de blah. That's the same thing that's repeated on that, on that page. And then the ninth page says that it works with Cherry Gatoron and Kale switches. And it says, although other brands brand of switches will fit, they may be loose or have a tighter fit than normal. Okay, so it says that you can fit other switches, but maybe they, don't, they won't work as well as Cherry Gatoron or Kale. But to be honest, those three brands have so much choice when it comes to switch options. I'm sure between those three, there's probably gonna be one that you'll actually like. Oh, uh, Zelio switches also work plate mounted. Other brands may be compatible, but their fit on the keyboard may vary. Okay, I've never actually heard of that switch make before. Um, I've definitely had a Cherry Gator and Kale, but Zelio, I'm not sure. The proper keyboard uh, enthusiast amongst you will probably know what those are. Uh, and it is optional if you want to have the backlit function as non-LED switch would block the light. Uh, so non-LED switches can be modified by the user to support the LEDs, um, but for best performance, the uh, the LED compatible switches are recommended, basically. Uh, and it also has software, so we should probably probably try that out for definite. Uh, but you can. It looks like you can change all the LED settings on board the keyboard, so you don't actually have to use the software. So it has animation speed, brightness, blah blah blah. blah. Okay, so that, I would say that's pretty much the keyboard covered. Let's open some other stuff up. So I've got the Gatoron switches. The ones I'm gonna opt to use are the black switches uh, because I never really tried black switches, not even like Cherry MX black switches. So I wanna see what they feel like. I will open up the reds as well because I just wanna see how they feel compared to Cherry MX switches. On the back of the box, it describes the black switches are, if the red switch is too light, then this is your best bet. Still smooth, but requires more force to press down. The red switch is described as the ideal and most common switch preferred by gamers. Smooth as butter, allowing rapid execution of the keys. Uh, from what I've heard, actually, uh, Gatron switches are meant to feel more smooth. So I'm quite interested to try one of these out. Yeah, that feels smooth. It feels smooth. It's not light actually, considering the black switches are like require more force than the red switches. They don't actually feel too bad. So in the box, it looks like we get some another thing that we already have, and it gives you the same instruction sheet. Oh, and there's a sticker. You get a glorious PC gaming race sticker. Where should I put this? I have ascended. <laughs> Okay, that was so childish, wasn't it? Let's not do that. Uh, I'll put it on my shirt. There we go. It's not a very sticky sticker. There we go. Uh, may your frame rates be mighty and your draw distance far. Thank you. Uh, we also get some tweezers in here. So those are for bending the pins, like it mentioned, in case the pins are a little bit wonky. If they've had a had a bit of a rough journey on their way to me, but on this keycap, they look straight from what I can tell. Yeah, maybe that one's slightly off. Let's have a go at putting it in. So I'm guessing we just line, line the little things up. Slide her in, let's do this one up here. Yay! I put one in. That was easy. That feels good. That feels good. So ideally what I would do if I had the choice of like all the switches is I would use tactile switches on most of the keyboard because I personally find them better for typing. That's what they're made for. Uh, because when you, you fill the key, key press basically, you have like that tactile bump in them. Uh, so it kind of makes it better for typing because you're less likely to kind of accidentally press a key or like you can feel when you make mistakes and stuff. Uh, and then I would have like in the gaming area, so where W, A, S, and D is, I would put those as linear switches because linear switches are better for gaming with. Uh, so 
that would be like my ideal setup but because there is kind of limited options at the moment because a lot of them are out of stock or sold out or whatever i think i'm just going to do the whole keyboard in black switches but i will open the red switches up because i want to see what they feel like jesus i like murdered that box oh sticker Okay, so these are the red switches. Oh, they look quite different actually. So the bag of the black ones, the plastic on them looks like more gray. The red switches are like proper bright, like really bright. Now let me have a feel of one of those. Oh yeah, definitely much lighter, but still really smooth. Um, I definitely personally prefer the black switch. So I'm gonna go ahead with my plan of uh, using those black switches. Yeah, also the red switch, I don't know how to describe it. It feels kind of like rattly. I think I prefer like the Cherry MX red switch, but the black switch feels really nice. I really like that one. It has just like the right amount of force and it feels really smooth and like solid. The red switch for some reason feels like a bit light and kind of plasticky. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try take the red switch out See how easy that is to do. Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Pretty easy to take out. So yeah, that seems to work pretty well. I, de I definitely um, definitely think this isn't gonna be too difficult to do. I was slightly worried when it said about like bending the pins, but to be honest, it seems like mine have had like a decent journey. So the pins aren't all sort of bent up on them and I should just be able to kind of like chuck them into the board. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get on and do that and then uh, we can actually get the keycaps installed and then I'll actually plug it in and we can see what it looks like lit up. Uh, so yeah, well, I'll do like a little time lapse and you can watch me plug in some, plug in some switches. the last key oh I just took them all over the desk so that wasn't actually too bad at all I think it took me a total of about 10 10 12 minutes to get all those inserted um it was pretty easy in general this last one's gonna just be a pain now isn't it to prove that um there are some of them um I think basically all of them seem to come straight but some of them when I kind of put them in the wrong angle the pens do bends slightly easily uh, so it is a case of like you can tell when it's going to go in and when it kind of like you need to take it back out again and like re-bend the pin only one of them was like properly bent like quite badly but I actually managed to straighten it back out again so there's 105 keys installed in the keyboard and you get 120 switches uh, so I should have 15 left over three six nine well, yeah, 15 in there. So you get the you get the amount in the box that you say you're gonna get and I haven't lost any. So yeah, 120 switches in the box that you buy, 105 of those go into the keyboard. Um, so yeah, that wasn't too bad in general. Uh, I found them pretty easy to install. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't really have any problems getting them all into place. Uh, obviously it just does take a little bit of time. So yeah, like I said, 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, so now it's basically time to get the keycaps on. So it's gonna be the same process over again. I do, this is really satisfying to like press for some reason uh, with no keycaps on. I think I can feel, it's kind of like a, oh, kind of like a massage. It's, it's odd, but it, it doesn't look quite cool as well with like all the keycaps off. 
Um, so yeah, I think it's probably time to get the keycaps installed. Um, you know what, actually, I might plug it in now and we can check what the lighting looks like without the keycaps on, because I reckon it's probably going to look pretty cool. Uh, and then I can get the Aura keycaps in place on the keyboard. Um, the keycaps are, um, these are PBT plastic and these ones are ABS plastic. So the ABS plastic ones are like £15, the PBT Aura keycaps. I personally prefer PBT. Uh, these ones are like £25, so they're a bit more expensive. You can only get them in the US one. Um, but I reckon they're going to look really cool. And being PBT keycaps as well, they will be like harder wearing and probably provide a slightly better typing experience. I find them more more satisfying to type on. Um, so I'll get these opened up, get them installed on the keyboard. Um, but yeah, let's get it plugged in and see what the lighting looks like. Oh yeah, that does look pretty, pretty sweet. That looks so cool. Oh, I'd love to have like transparent keycaps and that look awesome, probably so impractical, but oh, it looks so pretty. I think all keyboards, RGB keyboards look like this when you don't actually put keycaps on them though. Uh, so that's probably, probably why it does look so cool. Um, but yeah, the, the RGB lighting's really nice. It shines off really nicely against that back plate. Um, I'm going to put the keycaps on so I know like what the shortcuts are for the lighting because uh, I'm not sure at the moment I can't really tell uh, what all the different shortcuts are to change the RGB lighting. I imagine, I think the function key is going to be one of these, isn't it? Uh, and then it will have like options to change it. But I'm going to get these keycaps open. Oh, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of like cut the wrong tab on the box. So it's like half open and half not. The box is so basic anyway, to be honest. Let's just get them out of here. Uh, so these are the PBT keycaps. Uh, I'm not going to bother opening the ones, to be honest, because they'll just be like the same basic keycaps as you get on any, any keyboard. They are like US layout. Um, ooh, there's like a really cool reflection. I know you can't see it, but it's a cool reflection. Um, they are like the... US layout, but you know, it's there's still 105 keys here, so it's gonna it's gonna work on the keyboard. So you've got an ascend keycap that comes with it. So we've got we've I, I, that means I oh there is actually there isn't a normal escape key as well. I was gonna say you've only got the ascend one, but there is there is actually an escape key as well. Um, um I'll fit the ascend key. I'll fit the ascend key. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna basically transplant these onto the um the. GMMK, which is it's Glorious Modular Mechanical Keyboard. Yeah, I'm going to put these keycaps on and we shall see sort of how it looks when it's all finished and lovely lit up with these rather cool looking keycaps. Okay, so as I'm doing this, I have noticed a issue. Um, you can probably spot what that issue is, and that it's that the keyboard, I think, is ISO layout, which is like the standard for the UK, and the keycaps I'm using are, um, I put those in the wrong place. Uh, the keycaps that I'm using are, um, for an American keyboard, so it's like, is it ANSI and ISO? I think the two different layouts are. Um, and I've put like the keycaps in the wrong place as well, which definitely does not help. Um, so it basically means that the keycaps do not uh, really kind of fit properly because the keycaps that I've got are for the wrong layout because they're American keycaps. And I knew they were American keycaps and I knew this was like a UK keyboard, but I just went with it anyway. Um, and now I've just, I've realized that that's not gonna work, but I'm gonna keep going with it because they do look really nice, to be honest. They do look really nice. Obviously I'm missing missing the keys required, but I'm gonna keep going with it and we'll see what the finished result is, even though it's gonna be missing out a few keys. So yeah, as you can see, I've got kind of a few left over. Uh, the, bit, the thing with like 
ANSI is like the American layout. Uh, in the UK, we use like the ISO layout. So the enter key is different and kind of over here where the caps lock and shift key is, is different. So I haven't actually managed to set the, f the full set of key caps isn't actually on this keyboard. So do make sure you check that. I kind of overlooked it because I wanted to try out the Aura keycaps. But the keycaps look really, really nice. It, they do take out a little bit of the RGB lighting. So it's not quite as bright as it was without having the keycaps on. But they do look really, really neat. They do feel very nice to type on because they are like PBT keycaps. And with this keyboard, you can see that it has loads of different uh, lighting effects to choose between. So by pressing the function key and then like the insert key, the home key, the page down key, or the end key, there is like different uh, functions to kind of cycle between different effects and things. There's quite a few different cool ones. They all look really, really nice on this keyboard. Um, and the lighting is quite a decent brightness as well. Probably in my kind of lighting setup that I've got going on, you can't really see it very well. Um, but they are actually quite bright compared to some other keyboards that I've tried. So in general, um, it does work out quite expensive because for the total with the keycaps, the keyboard body, the actual key switches, you're looking at like £130. So that's obviously quite a bit for a, a keyboard really, especially as you have to kind of build it yourself. But I really like the customization. I think that's quite cool. Um, it's something that I haven't really seen before. And if you want to use some like slightly more obscure switches, then this keyboard definitely makes sense because you can put whatever switches you want in it and it's just going to work. You can add your own keycaps and stuff. I do definitely think it is a pretty neat keyboard. Um, a couple of things, the cable is not removable, which I don't really like. It also doesn't have dedicated media keys, um, but it's kind of something for the niche market. I quite enjoy kind of like building my own keyboard. Maybe I can crack out the soldering iron next and maybe try to give that one a go. Um, but yeah, the GMMA, GMMK from uh, the Glorious PC Gaming Race uh, Company, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, I do quite like it in general. It was quite a fun experience kind of unboxing it and uh, trying out the different switches and things. And uh, it gave me something to do anyway. It's kind of like Lego for adults, I guess. Um, if you like this video from KitGuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from KitGuru, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also remember to press the little bell icon as well and you'll get a notification every time a new video goes live.